we made it through the morning. That is all complete. We got it all in the time that it was backlit. We are good to go for the afternoon now, right? Lunch, always after lunch, there is like a little lull in the action. Uh, every department feels it. You eat lunch, you come back. It's hard to get into the rhythm of things. Another reason why I like to schedule these inserty things, if at all possible, the least important stuff right after lunch. You're getting terrible light, right? Because it's very, very toppy. But also just get people back into the rhythm, get those little wins, stuff that's not as important. Give everybody a little bit of time to get back into the rhythm. And once you're on set and actually shooting, then you can start to get the other things done, like call for the equipment for what's coming up next. Everybody just seems to need just a little bit of nudge into lunchtime. So something to keep in the back of your head while you're doing the scheduling. But okay, we know we've seen this before. We know where we are. We know what we're doing. Let's jump in and see the insert shot. Now we just need a flat tire. And there's lots of different ways that you can play this, right? We can do this au naturel. And if we just jump in, this is what it's going to look like, right? This is sort of the frame that we decided on the, the tech scout. There's not too much changing here. You can see that we get a little bit out off of the car, right? We're not so close here. If we, let's go up a lens and let's see. You know, you're not like this. It's really, really close. Maybe the director wants something like that. I feel with the width of the medium shot and then the, the width of the close up, just how much around the world that we can see, feels like we still need to be, if we get too close, we're changing things a little bit too much. So I would say somewhere in that 50 millimeter area. And again, we've got interest in the shot. You've got light underneath the car, then the shadow of the car, then we're back onto the light down here at the bottom. You know, again, just salt and peppering the image as much as we can. We got reflections that we might have to worry about. Maybe there's me in the reflection or anybody that has high vis on. High vis, especially on a road job like this where you're really close to a road that is shut down, everybody is going to be wearing high vis. Uh, so any green or neon green or pink things in the background, you got to be constantly looking for. But for lighting, maybe this works, right? Maybe depending on how harsh you're going with the look for the close-ups. Maybe if you're not using the overhead, if you're just using the balance and the neg, maybe you can get away with something like this. Uh, if you want to just smooth things out a little bit, all I would call for is the bounce. Bring back the 12 by bounce, bring it and we'll put it over here. And then let's lift it up a little bit. And if we zoom out, we'll rotate it around. So we're actually getting the light hitting the car. And then we'll jump in here to the camera. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's way too much level, right? We're getting way too filly. But you can see, just looking at the circular part of the hubcap, you can see where the light is coming from. You know, it's coming from a pretty good angle. I would push it further upstage to get more shadow, right? Because right now it's a little bit too fronty. And if we jump out, you can probably see that frontiness if we come up here, right? The, the front of this little bit here, it's just a little bit too around like that. We want to make it more like this. And we haven't changed the time of day. So let's go ahead and change the time of day. So if we come up here, sun, let's lower down here so we can see the shadow effect that it will have. And let's go to, well, now this is going to be past, past noon, but let's say it's 80 degrees because it's going to be the worst possible time. And you can see, let's bump up so we can see the shadows now. So it's pretty much straight down, right? The shadows are no longer coming at us. You'll remember when we were doing the stuff facing this way, we had the shadows of these light poles coming towards us, whereas now it's straight up and pretty much the sun has now ticked over. And from here, the rest of the day, it's just going to drop in the sky until it's way over there, right? So anything that we're shooting right now is not going to be very pretty. So also we want to drag out this process, right? So be getting everything ready, tell all the lighting and the grip department to get everything ready so that when we actually get into the coverage of her angle, uh, we're going to leave it as late as we can, but then we're going to try and work really quickly to capture that best light. So there's no real rush here when we come back from lunch. If we, let's jump out of here, we'll go back in the camera and we'll see what that bounce is doing now that we've moved it more fronty. Okay, so again, it's pushing level and we don't really want to push level, even though there's not any backlight, at least the front of the car is not being lit up, right? At least the front side here is still in somewhat shadow, right? It's not it's not getting blasted with front light. So what we're going to do now is let's come up here like this. Let's take an overhead view. And I'm just going to move this bounce this way up. So you can start to see the shadow on the ground. See how it changes underneath the car. We just want more shadow going that way like that. Just so it ever so slightly touches the hubcap. And if we jump in here to the director's monitor, we jump over here, you'll be able to see the difference. See how really fronty there, the whole hubcap is getting lit up. 
Let's just find an angle where there's just a little something, just a hint, just somewhere in there. So now you can see, if we get rid of the director's monitor, see how far over upstage, right? The camera's here. Anything past that is upstage, right? And we want it that way. And we want it on the same side as the light is coming from because the sun is, where is the sun? Straight up overhead. So we don't want to be smushing light in from the other side, from frame right over here. We don't want to bounce back in that way. We want to bounce back in frame left, the side that the sun is on. So let's jump back into our camera now. We'll have a look at that. And even that, I mean, you get that nice little edge there on the ground, which is something interesting, but it's probably too hot here on the car. So you could either take care of that in the grade, or you can just put a net frame left. Uh, and by net, I mean, you would just take a four by net, which is for our purposes, let's just use the floppy. We'll grab it and we'll place it over here. And you can see the shadow on the ground already. It's happening, but we don't want to lose our light that is on the rim. So let's just move it that way, right there. Whoops, too far. We rotate it around a little bit like that. See how we covered up this, but we're leaving that little tiny leak there. And it's hard to do because it's not letting us move too incrementally. Let's back it away so we get more coverage. Oof, that's close. Let's rotate it again. Something like that. And then move it a little bit over. Ooh, are we going to get it? Let's move this down. Move this down a little bit like that. All right, so we're just taking away the front there. Let's see what it looks like. See how you get that harsh shadow? Just imagine that this is a net rather than a solid. They don't have any nets in this program. But the net is just going to take it down depending on the thickness that you use. It's going to take it down half a stop uh, or something like that, just so it gradually feathers across the image rather than just having a big giant bright spot because we have our bounce over there. And then if we're still getting reflections that we don't like and they're too distracting, behind the camera, I probably should have done this first. Uh, I would always place the biggest black that we have. I'm going to place it right behind the camera because we don't want that. So something like this, bring it over here and place it right behind the camera because it makes it easier to see the monitor for me when I'm sitting there working at the monitor. Provides a little bit of shade sometimes if you're going to tilt it overhead, but then it also gets rid of all the reflections. So let's move that into position right behind the camera. And we jump in here and this thing should be right behind us, which it is right there. Okay, then we get this shot and that just, again, helps you control the contrast by taking away all the frontal fill Frontal fill, when you're doing day exteriors, is your worst enemy. So let's back up a little bit, go a little bit left, and that is our shot. Right there, okay? So net frame left, a little bit of bounce to add that edge on the rim, black behind the camera. We'll just go quickly walk around so we, we're all on the same page. Right, camera nice and low to the ground, probably on a hi-hat or something like that. That little tiny edge on the tire. This net here, rather than the four by floppy to take down the bounce that is going into the car, because this bounce, most of it is gonna hit the front of the car here, which is gonna really heat up. We only want that little bit that is hitting the tire and to have it gradually fade down the, down the, the car. Now we can do that a bunch of different ways. You can angle the bounce, uh, but here we're just using that net to take away some of the level. And then we've got the neg behind the camera. And that is it. The rest of the time you are stalling. You're saying, oh, maybe we should, uh, should we change lens? Should we try a different, do we need another insert? Do we need the, you know, the over the shoulder phone shot or something like that? Is there anything else we can do in this time of day? Because it is still very, very harsh. But that is the look at the insert shot. Nice and easy, not too much changes. Uh, it's just about finding those angles. And because we played the schedule right, and because we put this stuff in the middle of the day, uh, we're gonna be able to take a shot like that. If we go to the storyboards, we will be able to take a shot like that and grade it into the same world as this, right? Because the shadow is at least, again, behind all of the images, or to the front, I should say. The light is behind the car. So just taking these, matching them, grabbing this shot here, something like that, and matching it with this, and then cut to this. It's all starting to feel like it's in the world of matching, which is exactly what we want from the shoot day. So next, we're going to take a look at the reverse. This will be the major flop in the schedule and probably the thing that will eat up the most time apart from the original over-the-shoulder shot that took up quite a bit of lighting time. So that's what we're going to jump into next.